Hi everyone, how are you doing? Well, there are only a couple of weeks till Christmas now, and um, so I've had a few orders in um, as Christmas presents. Not that it's as um, common as you would imagine. Um, I usually do a lot of uh, awards and presentations and sort of people retiring and that sort of thing. But of course, I have got the, the odd um, few orders for actual Christmas presents. And um, these are nice. This is the sort of Christmas present I like, or engraving that I like. Um, they're a pair of uh, champagne flutes, old, old style. Uh, they're not crystal, but they are a, a nice quality glass. Let me see if I've got the name of the glass on here. It's not good advertising if you can't read it. <laughs> anyway, right, so what I've done very basically is scribbled on because the the customer would like to have um, flowers on the bottom you don't have a lot of area to work on uh, apart from that and um, basically the whole bottom the rim there's not much there I haven't actually checked them for stress lines there's a good point hold on now I have shown you that before so I'm just going to check quickly now. Uh, okay, they have no stress lines. I have just checked, so that's good. Oh, these are Crosno. I've just noticed a little label on the top here, Crosno. Okay, right, yeah. Um, anyway, so as I was saying, there's quite often a stress line just below the rim um, if they haven't been cooled down slowly enough. Anyway, they seem to be all right. Well, this one does anyway. The other one should be the same. And I have very roughly sketched, in fact, into... Did I do it? Yeah. I have drawn on the inside of the glass. Um, I hope that's in focus now. You may or may not be able to see it. Very, very roughly. Um, clematis. You know what I like. <laughs> what I'm like. I do enjoy the clematis and it's got a very sort of flowy leaf. It's not that difficult. Um, these are, uh, they're going to be really simple and really pretty. I'll grab the other one, which I've also drawn on. I don't think there's much difference, but I've, of course they're not identical. I've done them both freehand and uh, as I engrave them, if I see that they need a bit more to them, um, there is a budget, so I'm not going to go overboard, of course. So I will just play it by ear. And if it needs more, or, or not so much less, because once it's engraved, that's tough. <laughs> but if it needs a couple more spaces filled in, then I will. But it's just very simple, very random. And those will be really pretty. Okay, so uh, I hope you enjoy and uh, don't forget you can certainly have a go and um, using the base of the bowl is a lovely idea. Of course, I'll be engraving on the outside. <laughs> Even though I've drawn it on the inside, I will actually be engraving on the outside. Obviously. <laughs> well, maybe not obviously to everybody, but um, yeah, you don't want to get your, your champagne into the engraving. So the engraving will be underneath, you'll be able to see it really nicely. Okay, enjoy. Right, the glass is in the holder, upside down as you can see, and by rubbing it you can see I'm not rubbing the uh, artwork because I've drawn it on the inside, which is rather useful. Here I have got a white Arkansas in the drill, and I am going to very roughly in my usual fashion, <laughs> just run the white Arkansas around the outlines. I have only drawn them ever so roughly, um, so I am not sticking rigidly to the lines, of course. It's a very quick process. I have sped up the uh, video to about 120%, I believe. Uh, 
And that done, um, I've just wet the towel and removing the waxy white that I've used. It's actually a lovely uh, white pencil called the Aquarelle. I'll actually show you a little image of it later on. I should have done that now. Right, you can see it pretty clearly. It's just a very simple, elegant design. As I said, this is actually for a customer. Oh, here we are. Here is the pen, the pencil rather. I have got another one um, which I found which is slightly softer than this is. So they are really good, but I will show you that in another video. Okay, I've got a fairly large diamond uh, in the drill now. Lots of water. <laughs> my mask on, my, my little duck mask on. <laughs> Silly old me. Okay, let's go. This is not a very thick glass and uh, certainly not a crystal, but I am going sort of relatively deep. No, I wouldn't say I'm going that deep, really. Um, it's mainly to get, get the features in. I am going deeper in the middle, but that is for sure, because um, this is a clematis flower, and, and although, as usual, it's not a botanical study, however, um, just getting the basics right, of course, and it has a couple of ridges going down the middle of the petals, which is quite a nice feature. So it really is just an impression of it. And by getting the, the ridge, um, the ridge is going down literally just two, two lines down the middle with the drill going fairly deep. And so the middle bit will be raised and that will pick, be picked up by the rubber later on. So you'll be able to rub that out nice and dark. Yeah, you can see I'm putting my nail into it. That's quite deep. And the base of the glass, of course, has got a, a good amount of glass to play with. It's not, it's not thin. And um, you've seen me work on the base area of wine glasses as well. Um, I think it's rather fun to do this. But with this shape of glass you get a completely different image. Um, it's lovely and wide, looking down into the bottom while you're drinking your champagne. I think I'll definitely do um, some more of these, different subject. Right here I've got quite a large diamond. And I'm just working back and forth and back and forth in a leaf sort of style. Um, it just um, not not with ridges, but you get a slight texture in the in the correct direction because those are the effects that are on the petals, and this gives you those effects really quickly and really easily, as you can see. doing this all the way around and as I said earlier if I feel that I need to add to this um, as I go along or once I've finished all the main features I will simply add to it in fact um, I think I mentioned I'm actually doing two glasses that are roughly the same uh, just uh, roughly the same area of engraving 
but certainly not an identical picture, just the same subject because I've completely freehand drawn them on. So they will be completely different. But you'll get an overall image. They'll both have the same amount of engraving on. And you'll be able to, you know, I'll be able to hold them up and look at them and make sure that both have about the same amount of engraving. And I'll be adding, um, I think I do add a few leaves here and there to each one, each glass. But for this video, I will just be showing this one glass, which is the first glass. Now I did that little bit quite deep actually, that was rather nice to be able to do that. A little bit in the middle. Now because I have done the effects on the side of the petals, I'm just once again going over the middle ridges. Because um, the side effect, the, the petal um, effects went over the ridges slightly, so just um, smoothing them out a little bit, which I didn't really want. I want them to stand out really well. I found it quite comfortable working. Um, on the base of the glass it's um, not difficult it sits there nice and steady um, it's actually probably easier than than trying to engrave on the top of a wine glass where you've got to stretch across the the height of it to get to the end either that or you've got to engrave upside down in order to to get to the the bowl whereas this is right in front of me it's nice and comfortable Now the leaves have a, a slightly different um, effect to them, but also with a sort of an elongated effect. Um, there is a bit more of a texture to them, but I am just simply um, going with the elongated um, lines. You will see I have done um, a small bud as, as well. Um, that was pretty simple actually. Um, yeah, doing the same effect again with the petals. Lots and lots of water, as you can see. And steadying the drill with my thumb. These things I do without even thinking about it. That's why I don't often point them out. <laughs> But um, yeah, the thumb for me automatically steadies the, the drill. And of course I'm leaning my wrist on the front of the, um, the glass holder. So there's a nice plank of wood there that I can lean that on. So I'm altogether really comfortable. And this water just sticks between my fingers like that. And um, very easy to manip manipulate.
Now the ridge was uh, slightly different on some of these petals because we are looking at the underside of the petals. Here I have a green stone which has the effect, in my opinion, of sandblasting. So it is, it's not as pale as the white Arkansas, but it's not as bright as diamond. It's a very nice effect. It will dull down the diamond to a slightly softer tone. But this is a, a small green stone there is a large green stone that is very abrasive and almost behaves like a diamond now here you can see i'm peeling off the crosno sticker that i had um, <laughs> had not noticed when i was looking for the name of the glass on the base there is a there is a sort of an etching a very bad etching of the name of the company that's the green stone again um on the base and I can't, you can't read it properly and I hadn't actually seen that there was the Crosno sticker sitting on the bowl of the glass. Anyway, that's now gone in the bin anyway. Um, so I'm running the green um, stone over the petals. And you can see it immediately toning it down ever so slightly by somewhat smoothing it. And it's picking up the top ridges because I have gone relatively deep in those two lines. So it will run over the top and whatever is not deep will will get the effect of the green stone. So it will go to a half half tone because I will have slightly smoothed them out. Um, and by smoothing it out, the light passes through, which means that it um, starts to pass through, which means that it is appearing a bit darker. And this also... Um, has the effect of pre-polishing similar to the uh, wider Kansas, which means that once you get a, a rubber to it, it will really make it dark very effectively. You can see lots of dust coming off the glass. I have not got the dust extractor on today, um, but I have got a fan heater behind me, which is actually kind of blowing it forwards and of course I have got my big duck mask on <laughs> I do like this bird in actual fact if on um, on the occasion of um, a bit of sandblasting gone wrong. Um, sometimes um, within the sandblasting, there's a tiny bit of um, resist left in the middle of the sandblasting, which means that you end up with a tiny little uh, area which maybe not is not as san as uh, well sandblasted as the rest of it. And you can see that quite clearly. And I find that this little stone. Um, very effectively, uh, when you use that gently over the area that is missed um, with the sandblasting, because it mimics, mimics the sandblasting so well, it, um, it really is quite effective. There you can see the big bud. Just quite a large bud. <laughs> Probably shouldn't be that big, but as I say, not a bit not a botanical study, and I have just freehand drawn these. I love the flowy shape of um, this flower and the leaves. There's just something uh, pleasing about these shapes. I think that oh, here's my little grey rubber or any rubber. This is a softer rubber. Um, 
at the end of this video I have a I um, can't remember whether I did finish off the edges I might have done actually um, because I will have engraved the other glass um, and then touched up the very very points of the, the petals and the leaves with a very small burr uh, and there may have been another couple of things that I, I touched up here and there on both glasses until I was happy that they both matched. That to me was quite important. Matched in in sort of textures and shades and, and that sort of thing. Because I did uh, engrave this uh, on the one day and engraved the second glass on, the, I think I did it on the next day. And so you, you've got to have a quick rethink of, of what burrs you used. Sometimes I will, I will do um, a bit of this one and do a bit of the other glass and then go back to this one, do the next step and then do the same to the other glass like a little factory. And that way it's very easy to make them match but of course that would not suit um, the filming of it. Now you can see I'm running this rubber over virtually every, um, well not every ridge but you know the ridges and in shady bits giving it a bit of shade here and there and um, without spending too much time. Now here is a relatively hard rubber disc and that um, will very effectively um, pick up the upper surfaces um, of the ridges and make them pretty dark. Well, it was. Maybe I've gone for a cup of tea. I'm not sure. Come back. Aha! I wanted to flatten the edge of it. To square it off a little bit more. So I just ran it over a bit of stone. Um, not sure what that is, whether it's a aluminium oxide or something like that, but it's so old I can't remember. You could you could um, flatten the edge off um, a burr, a burr, a stone burr. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Or a diamond. So I'm just picking up some darker bits. I love doing this because there are maybe hidden ridges that you know you don't um, you can't really see until you run the the rubber over the top and then you you see the effect of your um, textured engraving that you did in the beginning. It would be great to show you things like uh, stone. So easy to do a stone. You know you're getting all the effects with. With the with the drill, you can't really see it, and then you run run the rubber over the top. Wow, it's just amazing. That's looking quite pretty already. Because we've still got to do the stems, and what I'm about to do now, um, after my cup of tea. <laughs> there we go. I got uh, my uh, rat's tail, and I'm going to do the middle bit of the flower, all the stamens, and all that lot. Um, and this is a nice sharp uh, rat's tail and I am pressing relatively deeply obviously going much faster as I have been all along um, with a sped up video and here as well I am actually going much slower than this and making sure that I am going relatively deep now in the middle because these little things are are poking out towards you, um, so you just do a dotty effect because that is what it'll look like, and then have them sprayed out uh, around the petals. Oh, 
I love doing this. It's it's really exciting. And especially when you're working on the other side of the glass, it's it's never quite the same when you are working on the front surface of a, of a wine glass, for example. It never looks as effective. It always looks better when you're looking through the glass. So um, it's a bit like um, jelly art, uh, making a jelly cake and injecting the flowers into it because you're working upside down and when you turn it around, you'll be able to see it so much better. Here's a little diamond. Um, ah, actually, it's a little bit small, um, quite frankly, um, for the stems. Perhaps in real life, these stems would struggle to hold <laughs> hold up these leaves. <laughs> But it doesn't matter. This is um, fantasy. Yes, as I was saying about the jelly art, uh, that's something that I am have just bought all the ingredients for and I intend to try and play with that because I, I just love the idea of that. And uh, so it's uh, injecting uh, an opaque jelly into a clear jelly and then you turn it out onto a bowl and you get that beautiful 3D uh, scenery and flowers. Right. There we are. Isn't that rather nice? You can see the, the how deep um the middle bits are I think that's really really lovely it's just really simple and just flowy and elegant yep <laughs> this is the point I was talking about earlier I've gone back with a teeny tiny little burr and I am ensuring that the very, very points are neat. Yeah, because it would be sad to have beautiful flowers and um, but with unfinished edges. When I say edges, actually the edges all round the petals I will have already double checked that there are no uh, nasty chippy bits or um, sometimes you get a little bit of the outline of the white arkansas sticking out that you haven't quite got to the edge of and you just make sure there's nothing like that lying around and it's all neatly finished and again I don't like to see any kind of outline um, I don't like to see any um, sort of a deeper a diamond effect around the edge of something. You're um, basically you're colouring in, if you like, it needs to go right up to the edge. sign it interesting I signed it dry I normally blob a big drop of water on me I signed it dry <laughs> now here is the little handful of tools that I used and I will be putting together one glass and this set of tools. Um, and I will let you know uh, once I post this, the price of them all. So that you can follow this video and create exactly what I have cre created or something similar. <laughs> and um, yeah, that was because I had somebody suggest that. Um, 
I'm trying to think who it was now. One of my patrons, I'm not sure. Uh, there you go. Lovely. Well, I do hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Not sure what the next one will be, but there will be another video up pretty soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.